Hello, my dear gardening friends. Today I am ready to trim my beautiful climber, the generous gardener. And this video would be divided into different sections. In first section, I will be focusing on some of your questions about uh, how, what to do and how to grow climbing roses in your garden. Also, I would be uh, focusing off on several rules, how to do the trimming of uh, the climber for the beginner azarians. And if you are not the beginner azarian and you want to see how I actually do it, you're welcome to jump to this timing. But today, here we have, we have two different uh, uh, age climbing roses, one on one side, another on another side. This uh, mature climber is around 10 years old and this one is around four. So it, you can see the difference. Uh, this one has more stems. Some stems are aging, much darker color, and there is one stem which is dead. So today we will be trimming this all out, clearing all this twiggy stuff. There was a nest here. One, uh, last year we had robin nest here and the year before that we had cardinals nesting right on top. So I'm sure that my uh, cleaning will disturb that nest, but hopefully we will get another bird this summer again. So stay, stu stay tuned and let's get trimming. All right, question number one, or not even a question, a concern number one. Uh, the enthusiastic gardener goes to the garden center, buys this little um, uh, rose plant, which has only, let's say, three sticks coming out of the pot, brings it into the garden, plants it out and is scared of what this rose is going to produce or doesn't know what to do with that rose. So let me walk you through uh, each step what that rose is going to do and why you shouldn't be scared of a climbing rose in your garden. So when you put that rose in and the st stems are like this, those stems are not going to live next year. What your bush is going to do that season, it will produce maybe two or three very long skinnish stems. And if you're expecting that those stems will give you some blooms, they might give you one bloom or they might not at all. And it is normal. So in case people are saying, oh my gosh, I put a climber into my garden and it never bloomed. Well, because those stems, which your rose produced the first year, are main stems. And main stems should be trained horizontally, and then the side shoots which are coming from the main stem will produce roses. Otherwise, if you let your main stem go all the way to the sky, it might produce a flower only on the top. Why is it? Well, that top bud is dominant bud and bud, and it suppresses the development of any other buds underneath it. So that's why you don't have any uh, blooms coming out of those um, buds under the main bud. But if you turn your stem, your main stem, down horizontally, and I understand very often we don't have uh, certain conditions, like for example me, my rose is climbing all the way up here and only here it goes horizontal. So if you turn our main stem horizontally, we force these side stems to start growing and they would be the ones to produce blooms. So let's go back to the first year. So first year, your climbing rose produces these two or three long stems. What you do, you tie them up to the foundation. Don't let them get broken by the wind uh, or snow in the winter and wait patiently for next year. So what happens next year? Next year, your main stem, for example, here. This is what I mean. My generous gardener, Last year produced this long, beautiful stem, which grew all the way to a nice, beautiful length. It didn't have a single blooms, which is fine. But this year, because I bent it, all these top buds will create growth. And on the top of that growth, at the beginning of January, I'm not January, what I'm saying, at the beginning of June, where I'm expecting beautiful show of roses. So that's what will happen to your rose during the second year in your garden. Those long stems will produce side lateral shoots and those shoots will produce roses. 
That is why it is very advisable to train your climber as, as horizontal as possible, those long stems. Next year, if you're not going to do anything to your climber, you're not going to prune, these long shoots will start growing longer and longer and longer and your rose eventually will be such a mess that you wouldn't know where to begin or end. The rose would be very congested, there would be shoots coming out everywhere and at the end if you decide finally to go into a trimming it would be much more difficult to trim. So what you do the second year, you just enjoy those blooms, the first probably blooms on your climber and you let it go into the winter. What happened next year, the third year? Now you really have to come in and do a trimming job on your climber. And some people say, well, are there such roses which do not need the uh, trimming job? No, I must say, if you're introducing a rose in your garden, be prepared that every year you have to do a trimming job in spring. And usually in spring for colder areas would be when Phocicia is uh, blooming. It's a, a yellow shrub, which is blooming usually in colder climates. But of course, people who live in Texas in warm areas, they don't have Phocicia. So usually their trimming time would be somewhere around Valentine's Day when the danger of frost is past. So comes early spring, your Phocicia is blooming, time to take your second years and start working with these stems, these uh, 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 lateral stems. We don't take the main stems down. We don't touch them. We only shorten to three, four buds uh, the lateral stems because they are still going to produce blooms for you. And then a year after that, when these, some of the stems will be becoming older, you would be, it wouldn't happen during the fourth year, I assume. It probably will happen on the fifth year of your, of your climber that you will begin to start taking these old stems down. And you would be able to see it. For example, here, this stem is so old. You can see it it's old and gnarly. Uh, it battled all the winter. And uh, I'm going to take it out and I will give my climber the opportunity to redirect all that energy and push it into creating new beautiful blooms. And as a result, you will have such a beautiful production from your climber in your garden. Second question I just received today or yesterday, I believe, from Molly's. Uh, please forgive me if I pronounce your, your name incorrectly. Hi, doggies. So Marlies is uh, trying to figure out how do uh, sellers of roses um, define the height of a climber? Is it according to these big, long shoots, how high they are? Is it according to uh, where it is on the foundation? And uh, it's a tricky answer because it can vary. Uh, first, the, uh, what it varies on would be place where you live. If you live in the warmer zones, uh, plants behave more vigorously. They are bigger, taller, bushier. They grow stronger. They have this big, long, strong uh, season to grow, more sun. And in colder climates, roses are getting smaller and smaller the colder it gets. But my answer to that would be the sellers of roses, the hybridizers of roses, judge the height according to what height structure that climber can conquer. Climb on top and create a beautiful harmonious growth. So here, if I have this arch, which is probably, I would say eight feet, I was thinking that the whole structure is probably 10 feet together with the rose, but the arch itself is eight feet. So if I plant something, uh, a small climber, which can climb only eight feet high, that climber is not going to conquer this arch all the way to the top but generous gardener probably eight feet arch is a little bit too short for generous gardener which is stated as 12 15 feet high if i would plant here 12 feet high arch generous gardener would be very happy to take that height and be right there in the middle to celebrate sun and nutrients and weather Another thing is, when you look at David Austin website, how do they judge 
uh, roses, the height of roses. They do judge roses on their third year of growth after their first flush of blooms. And look at this. This is a four-year-old plant. This is almost ten-year-old plant. So you see what a big difference? The stems are not there, the number of stems are not there, but the size of climbers is there. So uh, even the plant is smaller, uh, younger in size, younger in age, it still produces the same length shoots as the older plant. So keep that in mind. That's the best answer I can give. And also the last question. No blooms. People will say, I did a trimming of my climbing rose and that year there were not a single bloom. Let me tell you what happened to your rose. You probably, what you did, you looked at these main stems and you said, oh my gosh, they're looking all over the place, so I have to shorten them. So you basically, what you do, you cut these main stems and as a result, you cut all the blooms which are going to develop uh, on lateral shoots higher uh, that, uh, from the cutting point. So you just sow your blooms, the future blooms, into the garbage. And you basically uh, uh, are training your climber to behave somewhat like a shrub because you are getting rid of these long canes. And uh, some people are complaining that their climbers look more as a shrub. They have this bushy behavior. And I really think it depends how you train them. You probably... Um, looking at all the mass, you know, you probably don't trim it on a regular basis and then uh, by mistake you trim long main canes and um, since you do that your main cane will probably produce a lot of laterals they're not as strong to go so high and your climber starts to behave like an unruly shrub it still wouldn't have a very harmonious shrub form so don't think that you can turn a big strong climber into the shrub no you wouldn't you would be fighting the plant um, but basically, the bottom line, make sure you keep those long main stems. Don't touch them, only if you have to control the, uh, the length of those main stems. Otherwise, we are going to work only with side uh, stems, which are coming from the main stem. And I'm going to show you how. All right, my dear gardeners. So what we need for this job we do need good pruners, we do need protected hands, so gloves. You want to make sure that you disinfect your pruners. I'm using here, you can bl use bleach, you can use isopropyl alcohol, whatever is more convenient. Just wipe it off to make sure nothing is there. I have my saw because some of my canes are very thick on my climber. If your climber is young, you might not need a saw, but I have a feeling I will. Rule number one in any approach to trimming roses would be you don't do just cosmetical tr tr trimming on the top. You always start looking at the base of the rose. What is dead there, what is damaged, everything damaged, dead and not looking very good has to go. Another good suggestion, if you are uh, tempted not to trim uh, those old stems all the way uh, to the main uh, body of the rose. Keep in mind if you do leave a stump, that stump would be living there for some time before it uh, dies and falls off and for all that time your rose wouldn't be able to produce fresh buds growing from that area. So that's not a good idea to leave stumps they might harbor diseases and decay so you want to cut it have a nice clean cut all the way to the main body of the rose all right let's look at the bottom of the rose this is believe it or not it's one climber uh, that's just because the rose is so old it has these different uh, stems coming so separately from each other but when you look closely you can see that this stem is dead basically uh, there's another stem. This stem is getting too old and dead. And you see all this damage here? Hmm. 
I don't know what it is, but we have to figure it out. So I'm taking all this stem out, all the way down here to the main body of the rose. <laughs> Now I'm going to take these stems one by one. Look at the wood here. It's, it's dead, you see the yellowish wood? It's supposed to be nice and green, flashy. All the stem is dead. Okay, so I'm going to take the stem section by section all the way from the bottom to the top. Another good candidate for taking out would be this stem. It is red. Well, it could be living still, but when I follow the, grow, the growth of it to the top, I see too many wounds, too many diseases, and at the top it is dead. So the same will happen to this stem. I'm taking it out, and I really don't want to damage this shoot. Hmm. You see all this dead growth? All this goes into the garbage. Don't even think composting it in your, in your garden. So step number one, all the dead, diseased, old crossing wood is out. And we start from the bottom of the plant. We don't look at the top. Now the second step, we're going to follow each main stem and focus on shortening the lateral stems, those side shoots. We're going to shorten them, each one to three or four buds, and I'm going to cut the stem just over bud. And we will just follow all the stems and trim them that way. For this job, I would need a ladder. All right, let's begin. It's not really a long process to clean a climber, believe it or not. Don't be scared of it. It takes, what, 8-10 minutes to do a bush and I have 21 roses in the garden. So some of them are real babies, so they don't need a lot of trimming. But it's, it can be just one full day of work to go through all your uh, shrubs and climbers and trim them in one day. Some people I heard a saying they like to uh, break the uh, trimming into different uh, sections because they believe that flowering would be delayed on later pruned uh, roses. I never did it, so I cannot stand uh, behind that statement, but that's what some people do. So this is how my climber looks after I trimmed all the lateral shoots. That's approximately how your climber should look and don't be scared to take a lot of growth out. Now I'm going to tie in new big canes which were produced last year. I think I will just attach this big cane to go here together with all other canes. So another step, what we absolutely need to do, we take all the leaves out some climbers keep their leaves better than others through the winter we clean everything underneath the shrub we collect everything throw it into the garbage do a good cleaning job and feel good about job well done